Hey, what's going on out there? I'm Sean Devine. Hope you all are doing well. Today's video, we are going to be building a custom vocal tracking template. We're going to be using Logic Pro X, but no matter what DAW you find yourself in out there, these are going to be things that will apply. I like to build my vocal tracking templates to be as efficient as possible, but to also be as fast as possible so that whenever we're in this process, we're not breaking the creative sort of flow flow with the artist and we want the artist or you if you're the artist to be able to record themselves and hear the vocals in the best light possible during that process so that we can facilitate getting great performances let's go ahead and dive in we're going to build this thing from scratch and then i'm going to let you download this session for the logic pro x users at the end of the video all the way from the start i can feel it in my heart like all right, so we've got a fresh session open here. And the first thing we want to do is just go ahead and create some tracks for our vocals. So I'm just going to an audio track and we need to select our input, which in my case is input 13. You're going to be recording your vocals in mono unless you're doing ASMR. But uh, for the singers and rappers out there, we just want mono. And I'm going to go ahead and turn on input monitoring and record enable. And let's just create, say, three tracks for now. And I'm going to hit create. And you're going to notice that when I hit create, we're going to get some duplicate signals and vocals. vocals. So we'll, so dis we'll dis disable. disable. Maybe some of you out there are going to have this effect too because you're monitoring through your audio interface and then now you're monitoring through your DAW. So we need to go back and I'm going to go to my interface and just mute that uh, input that I'm monitoring there. And then we'll go back to logic. And so let's just call this verse lead. And then let's say maybe this is going to be chorus lead. And yeah, we'll stick with that for now. This is going to be a really simple template for you guys, but it's going to be something that you'll be able to pull up and get things done efficiently. So let's go ahead and make some icons here. Love my icons. And then um, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to go up to preferences. Right now I'm hearing a little bit of latency and delay in what I'm monitoring, which as a performer, you know, if you're working with an artist, the last thing you want is for them to be having to deal with hearing themselves with a, a delay. And especially after you've been tracking for a while, you notice even the smallest bit of latency, which right now it's saying we have... 25 milliseconds which doesn't seem like it would be a lot but i'm noticing it and it would bother me big time especially rappers you know where timing is so important we want to go ahead and turn this io buffer size to as low as it can go without you know totally crapping out your computer so i'm going to go to 128 hit apply and now yeah much better like i'm i'm getting a much more instantaneous signal so the next thing we want to do is just activate any kind of delay compensation or low latency mode in uh, Logic's case, which is this button here. If you don't see this button, you can go to customize control bar and you'll see it here in modes and functions and just make sure that that low latency mode is checked so that you'll have that option up there to turn it on. And what else do we need to do here? Okay, so very important. We want to go ahead and set up some monitoring tools because it's just important to be able to see what's going on level wise, especially when you're recording things. I just did a video on setting up the preamp and the levels, input levels to be optimal so that we can get the best results. If you haven't seen that yet, I would highly recommend checking that out first before diving into this to make sure that you uh, understand you know, what kind of levels need to be coming into the DAW for recording, but uh, let's go ahead and just put the multimeter on the stereo output. And this way we can just monitor things like True Peak and RMS, all that good stuff. We don't want to have any, you know, excessive clipping, especially not in the recording. So what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to turn down the input on my preamp. And we're going to put a gain control onto the uh, vocal tracks just so that we can adjust this, but non-destructively. 
So we'll just do that. And then I'm going to turn down the output on my preamp one second. Okay, so that's going to be quite quiet now. But no matter how uh, loud I get, check, one, two, check, 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 check. I'm check. I'm basically yelling right there and it's not clipping or anything. So that's good. That means the input signal is going to be nice. But then we can just adjust the gain here in this plug-in. And that's not going to affect the actual audio that's being recording. It just gives us this control so that we can, uh, you know, set up something for the artist if they want to be louder in the headphones compared to the beat. We got a quick little gain control there to, uh, to take advantage of that. So we'll do that. And then also, you know, just going to be a smart idea to go ahead and put on a meter just onto your, your input track so that we can uh, monitor that as well. So I'm going to go to probably just a level meter and we'll do true peak and RMS. And we can just leave that up. I'll just make that a little small, put it over here. If we can keep that monitored and I'm going to put that before the gain plug in because we just want to be recording the actual input. We've got plenty of room and we don't have to worry about, you know, that input clipping, but we can just adjust that gain as much as we want to. So we got that set up. All right. So now we want to go ahead and create a track for our instrumental. So I'm going to go to audio, no input. We don't need input monitoring or record enable on. And I'm going to click create. And let's uh, put a, a dope little picture of an MPC here. And we're going to call this two track beat. I highly, highly recommend tracking vocals with a two track instrumental, no matter what type of music you're doing for a number of reasons, but mainly because if you try to track vocals in your production session, especially, you're going to run into a lot of problems and you're not going to be able to monitor yourself without latency issues and delay because all of your resources are going to be devoted to software instruments and things like that. So it's always a lot easier just to, you know, bounce out a two track of the beat, pull it in here for your vocal recording. And then, you know, later at the mixing stage, we'll pull in the finished uh, multi-tracks for the beat. And then we can just put them in here. I'll show you how to create a, a track folder. So let's just say this was like the kick. And this was the snare. You can just set these up to be done later and we'll just put them into a uh, track stack. So we'll do a folder stack and then we just call this instrumental. And then when we fold this out, that will have the two track beat. And then, yeah, when you get ready to pull in your multi tracks, you can just mute that and pull in all the tracks. But let's go ahead and let me go over here and just pull in a beat. Put that on the two track and close that out. Next thing, let's set our recording settings. And this is gonna vary depending upon the DAW and also what your preference is. But let's just say that we're going in here to record the verse or a part of the, the first verse with the artist. I'm gonna go up here and make sure that we set our cycle so that uh, this is kind of automated in the sense that when I hit record, you know, let's say we wanted to get at least two or three takes, or maybe they're just warming up and we want to just record, you know, four or five. I can just set cycle on, hit record, play it, and it'll just keep cycling back through that. And so we've got some options for the audio recording here. Whenever that cycle is activated, what I'm telling it to do is to create a take folder. So this is really cool because you can create comps really easily. I'll show you how that works in just a second, but you've also got some other options create tracks and mute, create track alternatives. I've done a video on this in the past. I'll put a link to it if you want to check that out, but I'm going to leave that on create take folder. And what this will do is let's say, all right, we're going through tracking our verse lead, hit record. Yeah. One, two, three. I'm coming in hot. Can you hear me now? One, two, three, four. Yeah, yeah. We're coming back through now. One, two, three, four, check, check. One, two, three, four, check. Okay, so it cycled, and when it went back through, it just created multiple takes. All right, and then I can go through, and if I wanted to comp that really easily with Logic, you can do that. But you've got all the takes there either way. And you can see when I turn the gain up, we're clipping, but that's not the actual audio. This is our audio recording. You can see I've got tons of headroom. So in terms of monitoring, 
you know, you definitely don't have to worry about clipping in that way. As long as you're not actually recording it at levels that high, you know, we can clip things as long as they're uh, able to hear themselves uh, properly, then again, don't worry about that. Um, But you definitely want to be concerned about not clipping your uh, input. And so we talked about that in the, the last video with preamp settings. Keep an eye on those input levels. You know, gain staging in the recording process is very, very important. So make sure and keep an eye on that. So let's go ahead and just add a couple of little tracking effects just to kind of give you or the artists the uh, sort of perception that they're recording uh, more of with a mixed tone and, and something that's going to be a lot more pleasant in terms of uh, referencing and hearing themselves. So we'll add a little bit of compression first. I like to just track with a little bit of compression, especially in this way, because once again, it's not destructive, meaning we're just monitoring the compression. But when you disable this plugin, that compression is not going to be on the vocal. So uh, we're going to put that there. And I usually just like to track with something kind of a low ratio, maybe three to one, something like that. And then just back off the attack, give it a really fast release and uh, just get you know just a little bit of compression just to kind of keep things in check and again give the uh, the artist a uh, a better reference and then let's say we wanted to just put an eq on here let's do the console for this template and then let's just say we wanted to give them a little bit more gain on the vocal give them some sparkle some shimmer we'll do that and then let's say we wanted to roll off some of the lows so then uh, I also like to track with a de just because sibilance drives me nuts, especially in the tracking process. So let's go ahead and put that on here. And I just want this to be you know, pretty light. So I'm going to turn down the thresholds just so we get, you know, something, 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 just a little bit of uh, attenuation and the S's. Now, if you want to do reverb and delays and things like that, I always on the channel am stressing oxes and buses. This is the probably the one time that I'm going to tell you that that's not the best option here. So, uh, for instance, if I am to go, let me turn that down real quick. If I go and just try to route this to a bus, watch what happens. See this orange? That is software, or excuse me, that is the low latency mode saying, whoa, we're going to disable that because that's going to cause you latency. So if I turn that off, you see the bus is now activated. But you are not going to want to do it this way because, again, we're going to be monitoring with latency. So we don't want to do that. So we want to put you know, the reverb or the delay as an insert directly on the track. So I'm going to go ahead and just put... Let's just say we're using all stock plugins in Logic today, by the way. Let me go to uh, Space Designer, and we're going to do mono to stereo because I want to get a stereo reverb. So we'll just put that on there like this. And I just want something subtle for tracking. You know, we don't want, want anything super crazy. But let's do maybe just like a, uh, a medium hall, something like this, and just turn it down. And then we'll EQ it a little bit. I'm not going to do anything super precise. I'll let you guys go in here and get your hands dirty. If you're curious about EQ and reverbs, just did a video on that recently too. I will link all this stuff in the description. But there we go. We got, you know, just a nice reverb to track with. We've got some nice EQ if you want to add some top end. And we've got a tracking compressor. Now, once again, the beauty in all this is that this is not going to be applied to the sound we hit record. So if I just go and I... Yeah, I got a clean signal. I can hear myself so much better now. Yeah, yeah. I'm rapping on this beat, man, it's freestyle. I don't even know what I'm gonna say. Okay, so I just recorded that. None of the effects that we just set up are in this actual audio, so we just disable it. I'm rapping on this beat, man, it's freestyle. I don't even know what I'm gonna say. All right, so back in here again, none of that was applied, and let's just say now that we've kind of got a basic 
sort of uh, tracking option. I'm just going to turn those effects on minus the reverb because that's that's going to drive me nuts having to listen to it. But let's just say we wanted to create you know some backing verse tracks. I'm just going to hit duplicate and let's just say verse backing one. Duplicate it again, go to verse backing two. And you can see as I move between these tracks, you can just arm whichever one you're recording. So if you've moved on, you now you're going to the backing, you just go down there and then we can record, go through the same way. And let's do uh, verse ad libs, right? So then let's do a track stack for this. So create track stack, folder, and this is going to be verse vox and then we'll uh, close this up and then let's say we wanted to have the same tracking effects for our chorus but maybe we wanted to use like a different reverb i can just go up here and we'll just do copy channel strip setting i'm going to go over here and paste it to the chorus and then let's say we wanted to be able to track with just a bigger reverb or whatever for the uh, the hook. We'll just go to large hall and vocal hall. Let's just go to that track and see what that sounds like. Check one, two. It's a pretty big wet space. Wow. Reverb. Beautiful thing it is indeed. All right, so we'll roll off a little bit of the, uh, the lows there. And... I'm going to change the size so we get something really big and washy. And then let's say we wanted the hook to have a bit of delay on here. I'm going to go to the tape delay and we'll just do a little bit. This is a mono delay. I'm going to EQ it a little bit and I don't want it to be very loud. So let's see, that should be about right. Yeah, just kind of a filtered delay. Okay, so then once again, let's just say that we want to create a chorus backing one, chorus backing two, and then we'll do like maybe two harmonies. Something like that. You guys can edit these however you want, but you'll at least have them all here. And I'm not going to pan anything or do any of that right now. But uh, then we'll create a track stack with this. And call it Chorus Box. And let's get our nice icons here. And all right, I think we've got a pretty good tracking template built quite quickly here. But uh, let's go through. And one thing I do want to add is just put an adaptive limiter on here. You're going to see with software monitoring on a lot of times that it will still clip. It's because of the fact that there's a little bit of a delay with this. And so no matter what, you still might see it. But the reason why I do this is if you bounce out, you know, just a reference, you want to, you know, just do an MP3 or something of the the uh, vocal tracking just to hear what you've got. When you bounce it out, you know, you're not going to be completely destroying the stereo bus. You'll at least have some true peak uh, detection on here. So again, not necessary. You can see right now it's it's still clipping even with that on, but it's just sort of a preventative thing. So anyways, y'all, I'm going to, whoa. We got reverb and delay on all these choruses, but I'm going to activate all these just so that y'all have everything ready to go out of the box. I can't do my outro with the, uh, the reverb on though. All right, guys, so this is just a really straightforward, simple tracking template, but I think it's going to be effective for a lot of you who are looking for ways to uh, you know, track efficiently and quickly and have everything optimized and also give yourself some monitoring options 
that are going to you know facilitate the process of getting the best performance doing it without delay or latency affecting the artists and what they're hearing and also having some uh, controls that are you know more along the lines of mixing but you want to start being able to kind of hear what's going on and then you know getting the layers to be right for what is going to create the best track and give the mix engineer the best tracks to work with all right so there will be a link below in the description to download this template if you learn anything in the video please like subscribe and consider sharing we'll talk to you soon